Hey, how's it going? This is the second part of uh, Flutter Tic-Tac-Toe tutorials. Let me show you where I got today. So here I've got a launcher activity to select single or multiplayer mode. Then we have a Google sign-in, automatically showing up the pop-up without any buttons. So there is gonna be only Google sign-in for now. And there you have a full list of signed up users. I have quite a lot of users because I'm using my previous project for um, Android Tic Tac Toy, the Firebase project. It was open source, so quite a few users signed up and used it. And how it's gonna work is you, you select a user, you invite him to play, and uh, once he accepted your invitation, you're all set and you start in the game. But uh, let me tell you about a few updates. I've made recently. I switched to Dart 2. In Android Studio, you're gonna go to Settings, uh, Dart, no, wait a sec, Flutter. And uh, in here, run applications in Dart 2 mode, enable Dart 2, select this one. And uh, the version of Flutter I'm running now is. Uh, O point two point eleven. So make sure you run in the same version if you wanna try this uh, sample. Made few updates, removed uh, new keywords from everywhere because Dart 2 does need them. Looks a bit cleaner. And yeah, let's go from the top. So now I'm working in uh, multiplayer branch. My launcher page just has uh, those two buttons. Single mode launches the page you've seen before, just a single mode with AI. And multiplayer signs you in with Google automatically. So I've added few dependencies for Firebase and uh, Google sign in. Here they are Firebase database, auth, sign in. Messaging was from the previous tutorial about uh, Firebase cloud messaging. Alright, here is our layout. By the way, just a little tip, here's how you declare constants in Dart, the same as in Kotlin. You don't need to wrap it in a class, just a file, declare them as constants, and you can use them without static imports. So here's my constant from this file. The only thing I needed to do is just import this file here. That's it. All right, so back here again to the layout. Here is single mode button and a multiplayer. Multiplayer opens a, runs this uh, function, which is async. I expect you know what uh, async and wait means, the same as in JavaScript. So here is a Google sign in function. So first I check if uh, I'm already signed in with uh, retrieving Firebase of the current user. It returns null if you're not signed in. In this case, you need to sign in with Google. Uh, Google sign in has two functions, sign in silently and just sign in. For example, in Android, if you call Google sign in, it does it automatically for you. So if you were signed in with Google, it uh, does it silently, but uh, as I noticed in uh, Dart, I mean in Flutter, it always shows you pop-up to select an account, despite the fact that you're already signed in with Google. So the sign in with Signitly does the trick. Again, everything is synchronous here because uh, I'm using await keyword. Very useful. Otherwise, I'd, I'd use a bunch of callbacks as in Java. All right, retrieving a Google user, and then you sign in with this account to Firebase. After that, return feature of Firebase user. The next, what I need is to save this user to Firebase database. Again, async function. First, I'm getting a Firebase Cloud messaging token. And then my user just have uh, three fields, name, for photo URL, and uh, FCM token for push notifications. And saving them like that in the user's uh, table. After that, wait till it's saved and open a user list uh, screen. Let's run through it. Here it is. 
now we're going to the user list I like to extract it as a two files user list and user list state just to get rid of extra nesting as you see it's just a few lines but uh, I think it's cleaner this way and for now what I have is just displaying the whole list of users and handle clicks so I don't know which is the best approach to to do all the logic in Flutter yet I would uh, think that in its state works fine it's run on every time you open the screen so I'm fetching users in init state all right it's an async function again first I'm fetching all the users just once Firebase once if you use the JavaScript Firebase SDK this function will be familiar for you on uh, in Android it was uh, it was called differently I don't remember and I haven't figured out how to cast and parse object with Firebase SDK yet the documentation isn't that great and you gotta dig deep into the source code what you get here is a map of dynamic to dynamic basically the same as in Java is object to object right here's this map there is a, a method on map called cast you pass a type this way and you retrieve a map casted to this type so the resulting map is gonna be string to user I've created this pojo with the ID name for the URL and push ID so it's gonna be a map of string to user but uh, it looks a bit uglier than on Android because I'm doing everything manually I don't know how to use built-in Firebase uh, parsing maps to Pojo just yet so I'm doing it uh, myself in this function so once I've uh, casted the map to string to dynamic then I'm iterating through it and parsing the users myself from this uh, value I've called it user map this value because it's a map again of dynamic to dynamic oh as you see here and now we gotta extract fields from this map and build our user model so in Dart there isn't a get function on map I don't know yet why but as you see there isn't so I figured uh, this is the way how you get your values by key in the map in Dart not the best approach yet but uh, it works I'm iterating from through map and uh, checking if the key is what I need if the key is name then save this name again if the, if the key is footer URL save it as this one push it the same for push ID and then build a user and return it once I figure out how to do it in a better way I'm gonna remove this function and uh, adding it to a list of users back to the layout what we've got in the layout is a list view builder if you into Android development list view is like a recycler view but it's uh, much easier to implement it's like super easy compared to Android one here's the you just pass it an item count as size of this list and uh, like a view holder in Android just a layout for for this role it's a container this one isn't as pretty as I wanted to because of the padding so as you see I have this uh, clickable inkish uh, background and what I saw in many examples is they use margin instead of padding which uh, makes your ink not go till the edges not the best way so you need padding not margin and it required me to create an extra container so I've got two containers because of that so but with the Dart 2 layouts don't look as ugly as before and once you extract them as functions it gets even better here's a little tip I haven't figured out why you need to 
wrap your value in quotes for text so here you see everything works fine but if I unwrap it and just pass as a value this way see what's going to happen Yeah, you see, there are some rows uh, missing or something, some weird stuff. So you gotta wrap it in quotes and pass it this way. In Flutter, you've got several options for creating your touchable widgets. Inkwell works fine for me. Doesn't affect the text style by default. On tap is the same as on click and on Android. I'm showing a snack bar and I gotta say I've enjoyed doing this step especially with the async await nice features again underscores are not my favorite feature of Dart but gotta leave with that in the next step I'm gonna use my Firebase push notifications for inviting users once you click on the name and um, I think it's going to be the last step for multiplayer as uh, there is very little remaining to invite users, accept invitations and uh, implement a multiplayer game. Alright, you can get the source code on GitHub, the link is going to be in the description. Click like if you liked it, subscribe. Alright, I'll talk to you later.